We turn now to a leading proponent of this holistic approach. Father Keith Chelinski is an expert on priestly formation and pastoral psychology. He became the rector of St. Charles Borromeo Seminary outside Philadelphia this past July. Father Keith, what's the history of formation in your seminary? Was there a moment of reform or change in the evaluation and training of potential priests? Uh, yes, it's interesting to see over the decades, even just looking at the various documents on seminary formation, going back to Second Vatican Council in particular, and leading up to the most recent Ratio Fundamentalis in 2016, uh, you can see more and more this understanding of a more holistic, uh, synthetic approach to seminary formation. Instead of just checking some boxes of getting good grades or just being obedient and, and not getting noticed under the radar, that was an old mentality mm. decades ago in the seminary, um, to, to see the, the integration of a good and healthy psychology in helping to synthesize all of the different what we call dimensions of seminary formation. And was there any kind of pushback on these efforts to make changes? Um, not that I uh, have experienced personally, uh, but I would say though, to give a little more context to seminary formation, sometimes it is slow to change because you, you form people as you were formed. Mm. So if you were formed in a certain way 40 years ago, that's gonna be your framework. So sometimes it takes a long time for uh, changes to, to really take place, to have a new um, perspective uh, and a new understanding on seminary formation. But I, I think now what I've seen both working in our seminary here, uh, but also uh, just uh, encountering priests and formators from all over the country, is there really seems to be a growing uh, consensus of what good, healthy formation looks like. Maybe it's so important to form the formators, right? Exactly. Exactly. And candidates are not accepted for various reasons. This isn't the only one, but is the propensity for abuse a leading factor? For sure, yes. There, there's actually a document that the USCCB came out with uh, several years ago that's a guide for psychologists that are many examples of what we would call contraindications to, for their ability to enter formation. And of course, any illegal activity, of course, is an immediate rule out. Uh, but any kind of uh, indications where there's unhealthy boundaries, where there's, uh, you know, troubling sexual histories, um, plus looking at other psychological factors, personality disorders, um, things like that, that, that would preclude someone from being accepted. Is secularism in the culture or those nuances and the way that the new generations, what they're being exposed to now and the new, new movements that we're seeing, does that affect the classes coming in? It certainly is a challenge, and you see, um, I see two trends. There, there's a growing trend of seminarians who are coming out of um, more intentional Christian communities, like whether it's homeschool, co-ops, or things of that nature, where they are being formed very well because they're, the, the families are uh, it, it intentionally trying to protect their children from some of the damaging effects of, of today's culture. Mm. Um, however, other, other seminarians who are not necessarily formed in that kind of environment, um, that you, you see miraculous workings of God's grace that e even in the midst of such troubling circumstances, how God is forming and calling them. But uh, on the same time, I do see the uh, wisdom in the new ratio and the new program for priestly formation that's just been uh, officially published by the USCCB, um, talking about what's needed. It's called a propedeutic stage. And this is a stage of really, it's kind of filling in the holes, filling in maybe what was missed in their formation mm. uh, in, in high school or um, just in, in their culture in general, that, that they need to, to this extra sort of assistance if you will, to be really ready to enter into the deeper philosophical and theological studies and, and the deeper aspects of, of formation in general. So then is there a difference between the new classes of seminarians coming in? Are they better formed and healthier or are you seeing something else? Well, I'm certainly seeing the effects of COVID, uh, that there's higher levels of anxiety and depression um, uh, because of these two really almost full years of lack of adequate socialization. 
Um, but I, I think in general, one of the positives that I really see in this new generation is a real openness to uh, good psychology, to an openness to explore things in counseling. I think in my time in the seminary and certainly before my time, um, going to a counselor was seen as a really taboo thing that no one would talk about and it seemed to be filled with a lot of shame. And one of, uh, having had a background in this and what I was had tried to do in my previous role before I became rector was really to take away the stigma and the taboo of, of just wanting to learn more about yourself and 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 to to speak to someone if, if necessary. And with this current, uh, this new generation, there seems to be a greater openness to this. It's They're very important. transparent. And, and so I, I find that very encouraging. It's important for all Catholics, not just those going into priestly formation. I recently heard from Archbishop Nelson Perez that wellness training, too, is surrounding fitness and food is also being piloted. What can you say about that? Absolutely. It's a, it's a program that he introduced in the Archdiocese recently. I believe it's called Fit from Faith. And it's instead of uh, it's looking more at the physical health aspect of our our human formation and um, to see what, uh, how can I somehow incorporate my spirituality, my relationship with Christ as a motivator, as, as a means of really treating my body as a temple. Um, and so he, he's uh, uh, brought a, an expert in that area to, to consult uh, with members in the diocese and it's available for seminarians as well. And I think it's a very interesting and I think a very good uh, approach to to physical health. Absolutely, our priests are also our warriors in defending Mother Church. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Father Chilinski, for joining us today. You're most welcome. Thank you very much.